All right, today we're going to look at P looping. So P looping is basically the name of proportional looping. Um, an example of this would be if we have a particular robot and we want it to go a certain distance. So we're going to go from a point of zero to let's say a point of 60 inches. Well, when our robot starts out, we want him to maybe be going full speed, and then as he approaches the 60-inch mark, we want that robot to decrease in speed so that it doesn't blow through the 60-inch mark and stops exactly at 60 inches. If we were to go full speed and then stop, uh, the drift of the robot would carry it forward. And we typically don't see that in human behavior. If I'm going to run as fast as I can to a wall, I'm going to run all the way, I'm going to run as fast as I can, then when I see the wall here, I'm going to start slowing down so I can stop in front of the wall or else I'd crash right into it. So we want our, our robot to be that same kind of intuitive uh, thinker as well. So we're, we're going to get some sensor feedback and then slow down. So uh, on my robot, um, it's kind of situated like this where the drive wheels are over here. And then I have encoders on each of these two drive wheels and there's a skid wheel up front but this would be the front of the robot uh, up here and this would be the rear of the robot and this would be a top view um, so I have my left motor is over here and my right motor over here we want to set up a P loop based on the number of encoder ticks that this undergoes so for all proportionality loops we need to make sure that we set up a graph and we're going to be using we're going to be affecting the motor speed so y equals mx plus b is going to be our um, um, slope y intercept equation that we're going to be using where y would be our motor speed and x would be our encoder value so this right here is motor speed and this right here is it's a sensor value in this case uh, for me it is my encoder value so on the y-axis, I'm going to put motor speed. And on the x-axis, I'm going to put the encoder counts. And I've got some important numbers that I need to put in here. So for motor speed, I have 0. And then I have my high, which is 127. I could also do reverse motor speeds and go negatives. But in this case, I'm only going forward uh, to a point. And then finally, I have encoder counts. And I'm just going to pick an arbitrary number for my final value. And I'm going to just make 3,000 counts. I don't even know how far that is. It really depends on the motor, the wheels you use. It depends on a lot of things, um, which we'll get into a little bit later in some future videos. But for this basic one, we'll just say that we want to go 3,000 counts with our encoders. Uh, a motor speed of zero is not doesn't really tell you the whole picture. A zero doesn't, it means stopped, but uh, a motor speed of 10 also is stopped. There's too much internal resistance for even a power of 10 uh, motor speed to just, it just sits there. So there is some minimum threshold that's required to move the motors, um, and we want to be above that. And I'm going to pick a value of 27 just uh, because of ease of mathematics here when we do some uh, equations. Um, and that's a pretty slow speed. At 27 is really slow, most motors can handle that. Um, if you pick something like 20, some motors still won't move at 20 and some will. Uh, most of them move at 27. And so now we can figure out what data points we want. So if we're at encoder count 0, so at the beginning of our program we're going to initialize our encoders. They're both going to read 0. What speed do we want our motor to have here at 0? Well, we want to go full speed. So we're going to put a data point right here. And then we want this motor to continuously decrease in speed until it gets to 3,000. And at that point, we're going to be moving at a value of 27. So I'm going to put in my other data point here. Now this is where you as the programmer get to make some decisions on how you want this to look. There are lots of graphs and ways that you can make this look to go from this point to this point. The easiest is a straight line from here to here. So if I were to draw that in, I'm just going to draw a straight line from there to there. We should be able to find the equation of this line using some algebra and plug it into this equation. 
So let's do that. The first is uh, the y-intercept, which is b. So it's where does it cross the y-axis? So here's the y-axis, and it crosses the y-axis at 127. So that's kind of nice for us. b equals 127. We also need to know what m is, and m is the slope. And slope is defined by the change in y over the change in x. Uh, some people call it rise over run. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I always like change in y over change in x. So um, the change in y, anytime we have a change in a value, it's always y2 minus y1, or final minus initial, divided by x2 minus x1. And now we just use these as data points. So this here would be our first data point, and that has a x value of 0 and a y value of 127. And this data point over here has an x value of 27 and a y value of, I'm sorry, an x value of 3,000 and a y value of 27. So we need to find then the change in these over the change in these. So if you notice, my, my y goes from a final of 27 and an initial of 127. So this is 27 minus 127. And you can see mathematically why I picked 27, hopefully. And then I have 3,000 minus 0. So I get a slope of negative 100 over 3,000. And that will reduce down to negative 1 over 30. So now I can write my equation for my p-loop. I can plug it right back into here and with all my values. So I'm going to kind of write this in robot C language here. So I would have motor speed equals and then my slope, which would be negative 1 divided by 30 times the x, which is the sensor value of my encoder. So I'm going to put sensor value and then plus 127. And this is the line of code that I would type in, and this, as long as I had this within a while loop where it would get update, this would then update continuously, and then any time the encoder changed values, it would change the motor speed. There are a couple issues with this in robot C. The first is if you define this motor speed variable as an int, an integer, it means a whole number, when it does this operation of negative 1 divided by 30, it gives a value that is now a decimal number. And when you have a decimal number as an integer, for example, if I had 0.5, it actually removes everything except the integer itself. So it treats it as 0. Well, if I had a number that's 0 0.033, guess what it does? It treats it as 0. So this number will always be 0 so what would your motor speed be? So zero times encoder, it doesn't matter what it is, this part is always zero, so your motor speed would always be 127, it would never slow. So we have to change where this 30 appears at. And all we're going to do is move it to the other side of the encoder value. So now, let's say our encoder is 300, now we have a negative 10 plus 127 would give you 117. And then if we go to, let's say, 1500, so that would be a negative 50. I'm going to drop it down to 77. So this now keeps, whenever we do this division, this is now greater than 1, um, which then helps us. And then you can remove the negative 1 and the multiplication, so we can kind of clean this up a little bit. So here is then our final equation. Negative sensor value of encoder divided by 30 plus 127. And this will work. Um, this works great actually. The only times this doesn't work well is if the sensor value of the encoder is a number that's greater uh, than the integer can handle. And at that point you'd want to use what's called a long. Um, but that's for a different topic. But this is our equation that we're going to use for this. Now this might be great, but what if this is 20? 25 feet that we're going. Not that it is, but what if it was? If this were 25 feet, then we're going to be going at half speed at like 12 and a half feet. So we're going to go 12 and a half feet 
slowing down from half speed to there. That seems a little overkill. So we can change the shape of the graph a little bit. We can actually cause it to go at a very at full speed until we get to some value that's closer to this number. And let's just call that 2000. So how could we get our graph to go this and then when it gets to 2000 and higher it's going to then follow this. Let's think about it. Again, this is basically like saying if the encoder counts value is less than 2000. So if it's less than 2000, which is in this space, what should our motor speed be? Should it be this equation? No. Our motor speed should be what? 127. And then else, so if it's beyond that, what should the motor speed be? It should be this equation. So we set up a simple if else statement to then determine this. So if the sensor value of the encoder is less than 2000 motor speed equals 127 else motor speed equals the equation and that equation would just be this one right here or whatever equation you come up with for your p-loop. So this allows you to hold a constant speed for a given distance and then all of a sudden once your distance goes beyond that 2000 realm it then jumps into here. I hope that helps. Have a great day.